OK, so good morning. And uh, uh, today we'll uh, learn a couple of more, uh, let's say, functionalities uh, in the React ecosystem. But first, uh, I'd like to address uh, a bug, let's say, or some functionality that has, um, couldn't be, uh, say, uh, developed uh, last week in this application. OK, so that will be our starting point. So you remember this is the work of last week that you did uh, together with Juan. It's exactly the same project that I copied to the week 10, where uh, we know that the upvote is working correctly. OK. We know that uh, the delete is working. We know that add is also working. We can add something and then uh, we set an email and can be added. So everything is working. And also editing is working. Uh, if you ch we change something, then the change is reflected immediately. So these are the functionalities that are working, are, are being implemented. Uh, there's just some maybe misalignment with the database because the author, in some cases, is the full name, but uh, in the form, it's, uh, it's expected to be an, an email address. So, but this is just a minor issue. Uh, due to the incremental development, uh, we have a, a, a little bit of misalignment. But uh, let's see how edit works uh, when I try to edit different uh, elements, okay? So different rows. So I can, the first line here, I can modify it from yes to no, and then click on edit. Sorry, uh, I need to put a fake email address. And it went through, okay? And then I can go to another row and modify it. But uh, look at this sequence uh, of actions that I'm doing here. I'm clicking on the first uh, edit, so it brings up in the form the first element. So just remember what we did by inspecting the components, the component tree. Here we have this uh, uh, form. Whoa, where are we? In the tree, we have the answer form here that contains uh, uh, this form for uh, entering an answer. It's the same form that we're using for add and for edit. Okay? We instantiated this form by uh, preloading the state uh, with the properties uh, of the element that we are trying to edit. So basically, the difference between edit and add or that add will bring up, uh, would bring up an empty form, and edit will bring up the same form, same component, with some data already preloaded. Fine with us, okay? We see that the current state of the form is uh, already tracked by the component. Now, the problem comes when I click on a, a second icon. For example, here. I'm trying to edit the last one here. If I click here, and I clicking, nothing happens below. So, what is happening? I'm not uh, uh, able to uh, go from the edit of one line to the edit of another line. Maybe the state doesn't change, uh, but. Uh, when I say, when I click on the edit button here, okay, so I brought out the first uh, element. I tried to click on the fourth one and it didn't work. So, okay, let's maybe some modification of the text of the first one and I click on edit and save. Okay, we confirm this editing operation. But what happened is that we actually modified the last one last row. So I click on the, I, on the first one, it brought it down to the form, then I click on the fourth one, it didn't change, but when I saved it, it actually modified the last row. So this, of course, is a bug, okay? Why is it happening and how can we prevent it? So if I open this one, do some edits and save or cancel, then close it and then open it again, everything works. The issue is only when I click on an edit after uh, 
the same is also if I click on add and then I click on some of the elements here, moving from add to edit, uh, but these are more subtle error. Let's focus on the editing. So let's see in the code if, if we try to spot uh, what is wrong, okay? So uh, let's open the code for this application. And uh, we have this answer component. Let's increase the zoom. Okay. Uh, we know that we, when we click on the edit button, we are calling this uh, handler, handle event, uh, that it will set uh, uh, edit answer, which is a state, uh, to the current answer, and uh, uh, brings the mode state of this component to the editing mode. And this edit mode, if mode equal to edit, it means that uh, we are rendering the answer form in mode edit by preloading it with the answer that we want to be edited. And uh, the update answer is uh, uh, called, will be called, when the, you know, we, are the, we are providing this update answer that can be call, will be called by the save, by the edit button below, to call this uh, uh, update answer element that comes from, from above. Okay? And what happens inside the answer form? Inside the answer form, we are initializing some state in, uh, say, in, uh, in add mode with an empty string, where this answer is not loaded, we preload it with the empty string. When this answer is provided, then we initialize it with the actual text. So, Imagine what happens when you are clicking on the second edit button, like we did before. So the first time we are setting the mode to edit, we are rendering this, we are preloading the, so everything is working. In the second time, we are clicking on, any, on the edit button on a different uh, uh, answer, on a different line. So the callback here is called, set edit answer is executed with the new answer, so we are updating this state, okay? Editable answer is changed. And set mode is set to edit. Actually, it was already set to edit, so we are not modifying anything. So the mode variable, didn't, the mode state didn't change, the editable answer did change. Let's go down. We are we change some states, so we are rendering the component. Mode is still edit, so we execute this part of code. And we render this component. A mode will be the same, nothing changed. Editable answer did change, so this is a new value. And uh, the, this callback is the same, and uh, this also is uh, the same. Okay, but what happened is that the editable answer is now different. We are rendering a component by changing one of its properties. So the component will be render again with a new value of uh, the answer, it was called uh, answer prop, right? Uh, but is the same component where a property has been changed. Is the same component means that we have the same state variables. And remember that the state variables are created only the first time they are encountered. Use state is only executed once. The initial value is only executed once. So when we are changing the prop, and this is a common mistake, initializing a state from a prop, works the first time. But if you change the prop, the state is not initialized again, I would say. It, it doesn't have any meaning to initialize a second time. Initialize it initially, only once, okay? So if you change a prop that has been used to initialize a state, don't expect the, the state 
to react to a change on, of the property. It was only the first time. So the component is the same. The use state only finds that this variable has already been, the state has already been set. It doesn't even look at the argument of the use state. This is only for the first time. So this is the reason why when we click on the different icon, the form is not uh, updated to the new version. Uh, because we didn't detect the change. But the answer property is different. So in our state, we still have the values from the previous row, but when we call down there uh, on the edit button, so edit is type, uh, or type submit, so it will be on the handle submit, and handle submit is uh, creating an answer to be saved by using the state variables, the old ones from the other row, but uh, the new answer ID. Okay, because this prop answer down there has been updated because I click on the other uh, element and so uh, the other icon and so it has been updated. So this is the new ID, the ID of the, the last row, like we did in the example, but with the values that were remembered from the ones that were initialized in the first row. So this is the mismatch. I'm updating with the value of a first row an answer where the ID is the fourth one. Okay, so what is the problem? So this, so. We understood why it's working like this. Okay, we are a prop that is chained, and the prop, the updated value of the, the prop, is used in the callback to select which line has to be called and to be changed. But the values that we are changing didn't, uh, okay, uh, reload, let's say, from the new component. And this doesn't create any problem when I edit, close and edit another one. Why doesn't, doesn't it cause any problem in this case? So if I close one and open another, if I open this one, close it, and open the second one, it's loaded correctly with the new values. Why? Because the uh, answer for component has been destroyed and recreated again because we had at least one render frame in which the component was not there. When I closed the edit form, the mod went to, what was the name, normal, was, no, uh, was to default. And so that form, the component was not rendered anymore, it was destroyed. The state was forgotten. And when we go to edit mode again, the component is recreated so we are not reusing a new state, we are creating a new state for a new component. So the difference is light, but we, uh, the, uh, it's a difference between reusing or changing the property of an existing component versus destroying and recreating a component with new properties and new states. Okay? So how can we work around this problem. Possibility number one, we make it impossible for the user to do this trick. For example, when we are in edit mode, nothing prevents us from disabling all these buttons. It's even strange that we have an edit form here and at the same time we, we can delete a line or change a vote or something that is during editing. So this can be done by disabling the buttons. So also the button would react to the mode and say, okay, if this mode is default, I have the button. Otherwise, they will be all disabled. So that the user cannot physically, say, enter this sequence of actions. Or in many other cases, uh, we change a bit the layout and we make this a model, so a pop-up, something on top. So until you close that, uh, there's a model component in the React Bootstrap that is very useful. Um, 
uh, you cannot, until you close this component, uh, the part below is not reachable, okay? So it's something that is a pop-up over. So in a way, we are working on the interface to prevent uh, this double operation to happen. That's one possibility. We recognize that there's a risk and say, okay, when we are editing something, let's forbid all the other operations. Or the other possibility is to tell React that uh, this is a component. When will I click there? I want another component. I want to be explicit that this uh, uh, answer form here should be different. I, I, not, I don't want to reuse the existing one. I want, to, I want a new one to be created for me. And changing the properties doesn't change the component. Only re-renders it with the, with the same component. So how can we tell React, or can React know that we are um, rendering a page with a different component of the same type in the same place. Because this is the problem. In the first render, React sees that we have an answer form in a given place. And the second render, we have still an answer form in the same place. And so it will assume, by the optimization algorithm, that it's the same component. And so we will reuse it, OK? If you move it uh, on top or if you do something else, it will recognize that it's the same. But you must tell, we must tell React that, OK, it's the same type of component in the same location, but it's a different one. And this is the same trick that we are doing with tables. How can React uh, know which lines we are deleting? So if it sees one, imagine we, are, we have a table and we drop two rows. We have the same number of rows in the same position, but it should understand that two rows have been changed. So the table row and, uh, number one, table row number two, should be treated differently. How can we do that in table? We are already doing that with table with a key attribute. Remember, whenever we render a list, we must provide the key attribute just in order to, uh, to help React in tracking the right component. Where did they go from one render step to the next one? And so the same trick, trick, feature, can also be used even if we have only one component. We can give a key to a component, and whenever the key of a given component in a given place changes, well, React knows that it cannot be the same component as before. So all the properties are only passed down to the component, but the key is the identity of the component itself. To make a long story short, in the answer form, in edit mode, you should give a key which is unique, for example, with the uh, answer, uh, sorry, was the um, editable answer dot id. Okay, so let me try it. If we did the, do the, this little change, we click on the first edit, it brings up this component. I click on another edit, I, you see that it changes because it's reinitializing a new component, the key changed, and so it cannot be the same component as before. Destroys the old one and it recreates an, a, a similar one in the same place, but recreating a similar, a new one reinitializes the state variables with the new value of the properties. So in this case, we are sure that the value of the property is aligned with the state, initial state of the form. Okay? So uh, it's a bit tricky, but we should al always remember you know, that components are created, state initialized once, component, a component is created once, a state variable is initialized once, created and initialized once. Then the props can change very many times. The state can be updated many times. And then the component is destroyed once. This is the life cycle of a component. Changing a property and re-render the component does not reinitialize the state. That's the whole story. 
And if we want to force it, we must tell React that, okay, this is another component, another instance that looks like the previous one, but it's a different one. And we do that with the key attribute. Okay, we don't need to use the key, the value of key, it's already used by React to, uh, to modify its matching algorithm. Okay, so remember this, let's say this trick or this, uh, uh, and in this case we see that uh, if we go on the first one and then click on the last one, and we change something, we are actually modifying the last one that we clicked on, okay? If, uh, if, if uh, we, we play with that. Okay, so that was, was one of the last points in, uh, in last week that we left over. And now, more or less, these are the set of functionalities that we will need uh, over and over again in every application, okay? Create, uh, edit, uh, delete, and, and uh, and modify. Um, okay. Now, um, something new. We recognize that uh, uh, the handling of state in React uh, can be boring <laughs> at times when we have a state variable in a top level component and we need that uh, the value of the, uh, that state variable down there in a nested component, uh, which is down there in the tree. And we need, we already did that many times, we need to pass the property down many, many levels, okay? Uh, and this uh, explicit passing of properties. Uh, React also has a, um, a mechanism that uh, they call context and they call uh, uh, teleporting of properties, uh, which is able to uh, teleport from one component to another component, a state level, uh, sorry, a state value, without going through all the intermediate levels. Okay, so you define a state in a top level component, and uh, when you are in a smaller component down there and you need that information, you can just grab it without uh, the collaboration of all, the inter of all the intermediate levels, right? Um, this is called context because we should try to do this in very limited uh, cases because we are sort of working with global variables in this way because every component could potentially uh, see something that has been defined in a top level component. But for some cases, for some use cases, it's useful. Imagine, uh, you know, a website that has a light mode or dark mode, or a website that is in uh, different languages, Italian or English, or an application where, of course, you need to know whether a user is logged in or not, and maybe who is logged in this, uh, in this web application. So this, is, this information is something that normally we have at the top level, in app or so on some very uh, high level component, we have a state that will be dark mode or light mode, a Boolean. Or a string that will tell us English or Italian. Or an object that described uh, the currently logged in user. So we can provide the picture, we can provide the name, you know, in the top right corner of the application. And this, that information is available on the top level component but it's potentially interesting for every component. Just imagine our application that uh, maybe we want uh, every visitor of the website to vote, uh, every logged in user to add, and only the owner to delete. So this little button down here should be enabled or disabled according to whether the current logged in user is the author of the answer. I can only delete my own answers. Or maybe also I'm the author of the question, I don't like the answer, I want to delete it. There's some logic. So I'm saying that uh, this button, which is down, down uh, the, the hierarchy, needs to know an information, who is the current logged in user, that has been defined at the top level. <laughs> and this is potentially true for, for many other elements or details of the user interface. 
That would mean that there are some global, let's say, or globally interesting states that in theory should be passed down to each and every component because potentially they are interested to, to everybody. And so that would clutter a lot our uh, definition of the component because we pass a block of properties at a, in every component in every render, okay? So the context uh, helps us in, this, in these cases. So we should not abuse it, but there are cases where some simple information is needed everywhere. No, the dark mode or, or, um, or light mode is needed everywhere we need to create some color, no, to all define some color. So every component needs to know this information, okay? Also the language, every time we have a message, we will have a switch uh, instruction, let's render in this way or on the, on that way, so every component that will render some text needs to know this state. But we want to avoid passing through language equal, language equal to every component down the tree. We can do that only once with this context object. A context is uh, uh, an object, it's not a component, it's not a, a React component. Is, a, is an object that is created with a specific call, a specific, uh, say, a factory method called the create context that creates one object containing two uh, components. Okay, when I call create context, it will create an object, and this object has two properties. One is called dot provider and the other is called dot consumer. And these two, so the context variable is not an object, is not a component, so you cannot render it, but the two properties, provider and consumer, are components. Okay, and they are different roles. The provider component is the provider where you, imagine the, you know, a teleporting tunnel. You have two ends the end in which you inject the object and the other end in which you extract it. So provider is the injecting, is the intaking side, where you, where you insert a value, and the consumer is the place where you can extract that value. So the provider should be at, top, at the top level, where we, you inject in the tunnel a value that normally is the value of a state variable. So the tunnel is not the state. The tunnel does not contain the state. The tunnel only transports the state. So you must have a state variable and a context, a context object able to transport the value of this variable wherever it's needed. Okay? Um, so normally you create a state value, a state variable, and uh, you create a provider component, you render in your tree somewhere a provider component by injecting, inserting into the provider the value of the state. This value is made, is, is not a really teleporting tunnel because it's not a one and one to one, uh, say, transportation system, but it's one to many. You have one entrance and many, many possible exits, okay? So it means that the value that you inject in the entrance is available everywhere in every component who is a child, transitive child, so the child of a child of a child of the provider component. So if I render provider at the top level, then every component out there will be able to use it. And how can it grab it? Well, the easy way is to use the use context uh, hook. Use context is the way to extract from the context object, from the tunnel, the current value of the state. Uh, the argument of X context is uh, the context object is not the consumer. There's another way which is rendering the consumer component, uh, but it's more, I see, a bit more complicated because you are rendering a callback that renders the component. It's a bit, a bit longer, okay? But the, the idea is quite, it's quite simple, okay? So we have three steps. First of all, we create a context object. It's a JavaScript object. At the top level, in our app.js file, or in some file where we can share this variable, uh, 
we execute this, this uh, instruction, create context. The uh, variable, which here is called X context, could be, I don't know, uh, uh, dark mode context, it could be user context, uh, it could be language context. Normally, we name it in this, in this way just to remember what they are. This variable should be shared and should be visible to all the components that need to extract it. So if the app component is in one file and the button that we need to customize in an, is in a different file, JavaScript file, those two files should be able to see the same variable. So this should be a global variable in our program. And usually we store it in a separate file. And both app and the component import that file, import the variable from that file. So that we are sure that the variable is initialized only once and everybody can have access to it. So again, it's a, local, it's a global variable, so we need to be careful, okay? We are not changing this global variable, so there are not many damage that we, that we, that we can do, but uh, uh, again, everything global uh, needs to be dealt carefully. So let's imagine, I don't know, uh, in our application, let's try to, um, you know, change uh, the language, okay? It's an easy thing to do. So we could add something in the banner with a, a button or a label with the current language. This means that we need to create a new state at the top level in app, okay? So we have our app.js where we need to create a new state, new state, new state, new state, and uh, we have a new state, in which is, in this case, language. Hmm? Set language. Use state. Uh, Italian. Let's, let's start by default with Italian, for example. Okay? And this will be a simple toggle. So we need a button to, to toggle. And that's easy. We already did it many times. So in the rendering, we have this navigation bar. Uh, of course, we need to put a button and the callback to toggle this button. So we need also to have, a, um, let's put it here, toggle language function that uh, if uh, language equal to Italian, then, uh, sorry, mm, set language. If language is Italian, then set it to English. Otherwise, set it to Italian, for example, okay? And so we have to, in the navigation bar, we need to render a button that renders the name of the language and calls the set language, the toggle language uh, handler. So in our navigation bar, we provide the language. Language, sorry, the braces and the toggle language equal to toggle language. Okay, we go down to navigation bar and uh, we can uh, add some button on click equal to uh, props, props dot toggle, toggle language. And the text of the button would be the language itself, props.language. OK? 
Okay, let's see if it works. It should be the easy part. Okay, we have a button here, uh, prop.lang, ah, sorry, didn't save up. Uh, 32, no, 29 in up. 29, uh, set language, okay. There's a closing brace here. Okay, so we have the IT, we click, it becomes through English and so on. Okay, that was easy. The, and now imagine that we want to change the name of this button from add to aggiungi, from English to Italian, reacting to this. Huh? That would be a nightmare because we have to go through to pass language and uh, only language uh, down to every component. So what we can do by using the context is uh, to uh, create a context transport system from up down to the whole application. So every component that needs to know the current language can query it, okay? So this is a state in app, and this state can be made available to other components that can only be children of app. We are not breaking the rule of the top-down information flow. We need to create, maybe create a different folder we call the context. And inside, no, not a file, sorry, it's a folder. In source, new folder, context. And in context, we can create a um, language context dot js x. So we have a file where we can create a context object for teleporting the language state. So we are creating, let's copy from the slides. We are using the create context factory with a default value. And let, now we'll, after we'll see what the default value is for. And then the, um, we store it into a, a JavaScript variable. So const language context equal to react dot uh, and of course we need to import react dot create context let's say Italian for the moment okay of course we need to import uh, let's copy it from another one uh, I don't know maybe it's already implicit the, the JSA. okay and uh, or let me copy from the slides later on. Okay, we are creating a language context, import React, and export this variable. Okay, so that every, every other component can, but just by importing this uh, file, uh, they can uh, access this object. So we just complete this. Uh, import React from React and then export default language context. So if we import this uh, file, we, are, we have access to this variable, which is the context variable. And we can import it from app. Okay, we can import. I guess you see here, language content from the file. So language content from this file that we have there. So we created the cube, the, the tunnel. Now we need to inject the language state variable into the tunnel. 
For doing that, uh, we use the language context dot provider component and we render it in our application tree. So we go down to the render and say, okay, we want all the applications to have access, potentially access to the information. So we can render the language context dot provider to wrap all our application. Every child of this uh, provider may extract the value. And the value can be put in by the value attribute. Okay, so the provider didn't, didn't create the state. We created the state, and the provider may only makes it available to other components. So let's try to run it if everything is okay up to now. Okay, it's still working. Of course, we have this provider component that is now rendered here, you see, content of provider with the current value. And the value is, of course, tracking the state. I said normal property, okay. The provider is a, is a React component uh, where a prop is called value, and if you are changing the, the expression, the prop is updated. So nothing strange up to now. Now, let's go down into this button, where this button is rendered. I don't remember the component name. It was something like, uh, where are we? The button, oh, okay. You are part of what? Of the... question component, something like that. So answer component, we have the what is that? Sorry, add oh sorry, it was there. Here. If the mode is default, we render this button. Now we need to change the string according to, so the component we are in is uh, the uh, answers component. Okay, we need to customize it. So we need the answers component to be able to extract uh, the state value without going through all the intermediate properties. So we could choose that the file containing the answer component can, can import our language context. Okay. That is the reference to the tunnel system. And from the tunnel system, we extract the current value inside the answers component itself. So we need to have uh, to extract the language using the user context hook. Of course, use context will be imported here from React also of the uh, language context. So this is the operation for extracting the current value. So we are injecting the current value at the top level by using the provider linked to the context object. And later on, we are extracting this value from the provider, from the context object, with the, by using the hook as a consumer. And uh, so we have a language variable here locally in this component, and we can use it uh, uh, in the add button by saying, okay, let's make it a bit more complex. We need to make an expression where if uh, language equal to Italian, we write aggiungi, otherwise, uh, 
he writes at The key point here is that we are accessing this language that is a state that was defined level, levels above, me, above, above my component without having that stored in the prop, by, but by accessing that through the context object here. And you see that it, the Current language is English, the button reads add, and if the current button is Italian, then the button reads aggiungi. And we could do the same with all the other labels, uh, the answers, the date, which is in another component, uh, and so on. So it's uh, globally interesting information, so we can go globally provide it to every interested component. We provide it once at the top level. We have the logic for managing it in the specific place. In this case, it's the app itself that manages this change. We could have another component, of course, for updating a state variable. The rules are still the same. We need to pass down an, a toggle or a, an update function to the component where the event happens. Nothing changes for the updating of the state. So we are not changing the way the state is updated or is managed. We are only changing the way the state, the current value of the state can be transported down. Okay, so that can be useful. Don't abuse this uh, mechanism, but for some uh, global information, whether okay, the user is logged in or not, uh, the language, the call, the color scheme or whatever, it can be very useful. And you see, just uh, the key is, of course, uh, to remember that this uh, create uh, Statement uh, must only be executed once. Okay, don't put the create in app and another create in the, in the other component because that would be two different objects that won't talk to each other. So that's why we are putting it in a separate file to ensure that it's the same object. We are importing twice the same object. Okay? So that was easy and useful. Now let's go to something else which is still useful, but less easy. And uh, uh, which is uh, the routing uh, of application pages. And uh, what do we mean by routing? Uh, we already did something of this kind, uh, even without calling in this way. So we here, we had the mod state variable, you remember. Mod was e is default, we show this page. Mod is edit, we show this page. Mod is uh, add, we show this other one, and so on. Okay, so we are sort of navigating through different uh, pages, let me call pages with quotes there, uh, inside our application. We are customizing the look of the application by playing with some state variables that we are using to control where the application are, or where we are in the application. Oh, sorry. Okay, this is a single page application. We only have one page, the HTML is only one, and the URL is only one. And so to navigate inside the application, we need to play some tricks uh, with some state variables that are not real states uh, in the term of uh, values of numbers of strings. They are internal states, okay? Uh, that give uh, the user the impression that he is navigating through different, uh, let's imagine maybe you have uh, also a list of questions somewhere else. So we have a page with a list of questions, another page with a list of answers. You click on a question, you see the, the answer for that question and so on. That, that would look uh, to the user as different pages, different screens. Internally, we would imagine that with, with some state that remembers if the user is now displaying 
the answers or the usually now displaying the questions. <coughs> but this kind of management is up to now totally done by hand. So we must remember what uh, mod equal to default means and so on. Hmm? Uh, the router is a concept, uh, routing is a concept that tries to manage different uh, sort of pages in a single page application. We call them different routes in a single page application by using or reusing or modifying the, in the native navigation mechanisms of the browser. What I mean is uh, that instead of using uh, some mod state variable that we need to make by hand, we can use the location of the browser. So the idea is that here, if the, if the URL becomes, uh, is this one, we have the home page. If we have a slash run, so slash add, then we will render the page for adding. Slash edit slash two, we have the page for editing and so on. Huh? The idea is uh, to, in a single application, to have different uh, addresses, different routes, uh, that uh, will affect the rendering, will decide which components need to be rendered, and can be navigated in some way from one to another. So we are rebuilding the impression of having an application made of different pages within the context of a single page application by playing tricks on the, on the, on the browser, of course, okay? So we have, may have different layouts. So in one case, we see some, I mean, welcome page. In another case, we see some question details. In another case, we see some, some answers details and so on. So the user would perceive the application as a set of pages and it perceives like it's moving through the different pages, okay? And this is what the user expects. In, up to now, we only have one functionality in our website, but if the application needs to have different functionalities, we cannot put everything together in the same page. It's already strange enough that we have the add form in the same page where we have the table. Isn't it strange enough? Normally, we don't have it. When you add it, you go to a page where you fill the details, you save it, and then you go back, you go back to the list. Normally. Just imagine what you are doing with normal application. So we have different pages where, did, where we are doing different things, right? Uh, we must do that without really navigating. So we don't know the browser to, to get to, to a different page. We must, we want to stay within the same React application, so we have the same state, we can share it. <coughs> every time the browser, <coughs> sorry, every time the browser is trying to do a get to a different page, we are resetting the application. We don't want to do that, huh? remember. Uh, and, and so we must uh, mimic the behavior of the browser that navigates through different pages uh, by staying in same, inside the same application. But, by, but also by giving the impression to the user that he's able to navigate, also maybe the back button could, could work. It would be nice if it can work, because right now if I do something and I want to go back, I can only use the functionality inside the application. If I, you see, the, there's no history here because there's only one page, okay? But maybe we can rebuild uh, this uh, impression uh, for the user. And, uh, uh, well, this was an example, uh, this is taken from the Facebook pages, but uh, uh, of, uh, you know, React was created by Facebook, no? so this was one of, the, one of the examples. The React application is only one, but, According to the URL, you have uh, facebook.com slash, it gives you one view. Facebook uh, slash profile name, it gives you a different view. And slash page name, it gives you another different view and so on. So um, the application, the React application, recognizes part of it. It's the same application that recognizes part of the URL and uses this information to change the rendering of the, say, of the page. So, like the mod variable was stored in the URL instead of an internal state. Hmm? This is the 
the goal. But they are not different HTML pages. There's no reload going from one pseudo page to another pseudo page. Um, okay, there's uh, some examples. So um, we are using the URL to store some information about which page, which layout we want to show to the user. And according to this information, we will swap in and out different components uh, that we want to render, okay? We can also have links uh, that go to different parts. Uh, we can also have the history, back and forth buttons uh, to work again. Just by remembering which uh, URLs uh, we are using, with the exception that changing the URL will not reload the page, but it only we we'll only uh, update the internal state. Um, okay. So there are different libraries for doing this trick. Okay. We are using one is called the uh, React Router from this website. Uh, here we link some tutorials that are not very updated anymore any longer because the React Router changed a bit uh, in the last couple of years. They are shifting to a different uh, way and also the slides uh, for today are a bit different from last year because we are uh, you know, following the latest version, which is 6.4, but there's only one, 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 one file in which this will be different uh, compared to last year. We'll, it's much different from what we had two years ago. So we need to follow along <laughs> with the development of the libraries. This is not the only, um, React Router is not the only uh, Routing library, there's another one which is also very popular, which is called Tangstack Router. But the, the concepts are the same, you, just, <laughs> you can just uh, follow one or the other. Um, so what does a, a routing library do? Uh, manage the URL for you. So it can appear in some way, but it mm, tells the browser, okay, let, don't reload the page, it's only something internal and help you to determine which React components need to be rendered at a given location, at a given, with a given URL pattern. Hmm? Whenever a user clicks on some new link or URL or button, what we do is to change the URL at the top. We prevent the browser from really fetching the next page. We don't want the browser to fetch a new page. We want to stay here. And we inform the component the React render tree, that something has changed, so it can choose again which components to render. Hmm? Um, so React Router is the library that is installed in as a, with the package react-router.dom. Uh, DOM because it's also working on React Native, which is a different library, so the concepts are the same, but the DOM library is for the web, of course, and the React Router Native will be for React Native. And it will uh, bring uh, also a real router, which is the general framework uh, as a dependency. But we, know, we need to install this one in our, in our project. And uh, what we are discussing is for, for version 6.4 or 6.3.2, which I think is the, the latest one that is installed. Uh, so there are different libraries, but the one that we need to install in our case is, uh, is the DOM one. Okay? And here we have the, uh, the, the documentation. Um, so, how does it work? It gives us, this library gives us some components that we can use uh, to navigate, to create, uh, or so, sorry, two, function, two uh, sets of functionalities. One is for navigating through different pages. It's a link component, it's a navigate uh, component, and so on, for moving, for letting the user change page, and the mechanism for rendering the right layout, which are the route and routes component. So we have uh, some components for deciding what to render, given a given URL, and some components for changing URL, changing the location according to user actions. So two categories. Um, it, this works if everything is inside a component which is called router provider. So very similar to what we did in the context. We had a context provider that enables all the components nested in, inside that, 
uh, to have some extra functionality, for example, accessing a context. And the same goes for the same concept of provider goes with the router. We rob the application into a router provider component, and this will, be, will enable all the nested components, so all the application, to use these features. You see, in a complex React application, usually at the, so at the top level, you have a nesting of one, two, three, four, seven providers. Uh, providing something, uh, you have a navigation provider, you have a context provider, and so on. So we are a, a, a set of wrappings that enables all the application to access these extra functionalities. Hmm? <clears throat> so the first step would be to create this uh, router provider component, and then, of course, to so you, we need to uh, <coughs> um, see how, how to wrap our application into some router provider that needs to be created, oh, this component that needs to be customized. And then inside the router provider, we are using, for example, oh, this link component, uh, link to slash, link to about, link to dashboard. They will change the location. It's not a normal link that we do with A. It's not an A link. An A link would uh, ask the browser to reload the page. A link is just an internal navigation. Okay, so nest, never use an explicit link. Always use the link component provided by, by the router. And this, what does it do? It changes the location. And, and then, we have these uh, uh, components called route and routes uh, that do some pattern matching on the location. And they will render the element that matches the URL. So we are, the user clicks on a link uh, to equal to slash about. It will change the location to slash about. And so when we are rendered this component, uh, we have routes is sort of a switch statement. And the route are the single cases of the switch statement. So we are saying choose the route that best matches the location. And now the location is less about, so the second one matches. Therefore, in, in all of this block, uh, what we render is this about component, is this, is this element here. This one will be only rendered in the home page. And this one will only be rendered in the dashboard. So we click on these links, and we click on the link, we are changing location, changing location will change the route that, is be, that will be meshed. And uh, matching a route means uh, rendering the element uh, inside. This is the basic mechanism. Everything goes through a location. Change location with link and navigate, match the location with routes. Um, if you go to the documentation of the React router, they tell you that they have uh, four and five, nine different routers that behave in a different way. Uh, so that's why we have a generic router provider that can be customized to work with different uh, mechanisms. Four, these four ones are the new ones. They are called data routers also, because they also have some extra functionality for data fetching, not for today. And these are the old ones that were before version 6.3. So the switch that we are doing this year, that we are moving to the new ones, and last year we were using still the old ones, okay? so that. Uh, what, what, what we are changing this year, just to follow along. Uh, and these are the recommended ones also, so we are no, not using the, 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 the deprecated one or the old ones anymore. And uh, the difference is that uh, those uh, below were just components that we could use to rob the application, and these are functions, the new ones are functions that create objects uh, that we can use with a provider. So they are a bit more complex to create, uh, but uh, they are more powerful because you can provide more attributes to them. We see how. Um, they, have, uh, they are different because they provide different functionalities. Uh, for example, the one that we are going to use is the browser router. So 
we are using the browser functionality, the, the location, like we said before, to track the uh, current state, the current pages. Um, the difference, <coughs> the second one could be create hash router, uh, which tracks the location by using the hash in the address bar. Uh, the hash sign in the address bar in the URL is only normally is used for internal anchors inside the page for linking different items of the same page. And so uh, instead of, uh, for example, like slash about, we, we would have hash about. Instead of dashboard, we would have hash dashboard and so on. This means that also from the browser point of view, the URL is always the home page. And we are intercepting some change that wouldn't really change the web page. This is only done to support older browsers where the reload of the page could not be prevented or could not be managed by, the, by JavaScript. So if you really need to support older browsers, you can create, uh, use a hash browser, but uh, uh, today with modern browsers, uh, the, the best way to go is this one, okay? Um, this sentence here uh, requires some server configuration. Is that, uh, say, because uh, if a user clicks on this URL or the second one or the third one, the, the server, imagine an express server on the other side, should always return the same application, should always return our main.jsx. Always. Because the location, the internal part of the location, will be managed by us, by the application itself. So normally, an HTTP server will return different files if we provide that, uh, them a different uh, URL. In this case, we should instruct the server, OK, you see different URLs, but always give them the same file. And it needs a rewrite rule in some way, or a, in this case, a, 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 a pattern matching rule that say whatever I'm asking you, always give me the result, which is the React application. But this is not a concern for, for the moment, uh, because in the development server, it's, not, it's already doing that for, for us. Okay, so it's already configured in this way. We don't need to care about these aspects right now. So the first step, or <laughs> the main step, would be let's create the router. <coughs> Creating the router is something that should be done outside the React tree, outside our components, before React is started. And this is why maybe it's the only time when we are going to open and touch the main.jsx file. Usually we don't work on main. We work in app. In this case, we need to work in main. Two, to do what? to create the router object and saying that our application is not rendering app, but is rendering a router provider. Let's see the current state of main.jsx. Currently, main, you see, it only renders app. We are changing this. We are not rendering the application, we are the rendering a router provider, which in, terms, we in turn will call the application. And we'll call the application because the router will be configured to load this element. This is our application that will be published under the home page and all the other locations that are below this home page. Okay, so this is what we need to do. So we need to import, uh, create, by, uh, first of all, let's stop the server and install React Router DOM. Okay, once we have it, in main.jsx, we can import 
import, what do we need to import? Uh, create, create router, browser router, and uh, router provider, yeah, router provider, from, and the name is uh, React Router DOM, which is the packet with the original loaded. React Router DOM. End quote. So now this means that we just uh, replace app with uh, a uh, router provider component by specifying a specific router with, that we just create. So let's create the router, const router, by calling the create browser router with a specification object called router options. Okay, so we have, uh, oh sorry, it's, no, it's a list of, uh, sorry, I forgot one parenthesis. It wants all kinds of parentheses. Okay. So it's a list of objects. And uh, one, we need, for the moment, we need to specify two properties in where, where do we want to mount this router? So which are the URLs that it should react to? The other ones will go through normally. So path, we mount it for every URL that starts with slash. And if we are matching this URL, then enable the route on this specific component, on this specific element, which is, in this case, app. Uh, sorry, it's not an equal, it's a column. We are, I'm creating an object. So now we can use a router provider by providing this specific router. And if you're lucky, nothing changes. Okay, it still works. We see that the component tree should have changed probably because the top level is no longer up, but is now router provider with some other stuff inside that has been generated. You see that there's a lot of uh, internal providers that provide different subset of functionalities that are being rendered, okay, for us. Router, navigation provider, location provider, data route, uh, and here we have our app. So we are wrapping our app with a, a, a set of different functionalities that are enabled by these, all these components that are transparent to us in a way. And from app onwards, we, we still have our application. Okay? So if we need to think about this application as a <coughs> multi page application, um, we should plan how, how it works, how we want it to work, and then learn uh, um, how to implement it with, with, the, with the different uh, uh, components. The first step is uh, to decide uh, which are the pages in our applications. And then we have a break and start the implementation later. For example, here in the exercise for this week, we uh, I'm showing too much things, too many things. Let me make some space. 
the idea is that uh, we may have different pages for our application. Let's start to think about the whole application. We may have a home page where we list the questions. We don't have the question in our state yet, okay? We don't have the list of questions yet. We had that in the database, but we, we still didn't transport them into state variables. But let's imagine the application, the final application. Home page, list of questions. Then, if you click on a question, you go to a different page with the answers to that question. So the detailed page of the question itself, which is what we, are, we have been working up to now. A single question and its answers, and all the actions related to these answers. Like adding or editing the answer itself. Okay? So the um, point here is we need to map these different modes of the application to URLs, to different locations. Okay. So for example, let me open a file. We have location and uh, function. So the slash location could be the home page with a list of questions. What can we do with the list of questions? Mm, we can see them, we can click on one of them, and maybe we can add a new question. Okay? So we can select one, or one, or can uh, add one new question on this page. So we are imagining what is on that page. If you have paper and pencil, you can just draw it and say, okay, we have not, and that button at the, at the bottom, and all the questions are just links. With some information about them, the number of answers, the date, uh, the, the author, whatever you want. That is the layout that, will be, that we want to render if the location is home page. Then uh, we can have a <coughs> a page where we show the answers for a given question. So that could be something like uh, questions number three or whatever. If we have an URL like that, we are saying that uh, we want to show the answers to a given question and the question is three. It's similar to what we did to the server side you know, by mapping uh, operations or uh, objects into fragments of URLs. The idea is similar, but here we are thinking about the layouts. What do I want to show if the address is like this? So in this case, it will show me the detail of uh, uh, question number three. And uh, uh, the list of its answers. Of its, uh, let me save this file as a text file, otherwise it will continue to uh, routes, uh, client routes the text in And the list of, uh, so it's not JavaScript, it's just text, okay? And the list of uh, um, answers. And what we can do is we can delete, uh, edit, uh, upvote, uh, add a new answer, and maybe for edit and answer, we can have a separate page 
we can have uh, uh, something like uh, uh, questions uh, three edit and uh, is a page for editing a question while questions uh, sorry a question an answer to question number three an answer to question number three why we have questions uh, three add could be a page for editing uh, adding a new answer adding with a d a new answer an answer to question number three, for example. Or we, maybe we also need, uh, we don't know, we need to think, okay, but let's just imagine we have a number, a number of, uh, for editing the answer number seven, I don't know, sure, I'm not sure yet if we need the number of answers to be edited, probably yes. We just imagine all the pages and we give a location string for each of them. That makes sense to us. There are no specific rules, some which is regular. And of course, we could also imagine something like uh, uh, an add question, which is a page for a new question. And whatever you need, an about page, a login page. Each of them will be a different page, a different functionality in the same application. And in the same application, it means it's all generated by app and it all shares the same state of the components. We are not navigating to an about page. We are rendering the about page, and when we are rendering the about page, we, are not, we decide not to render the list of questions nor the list of answers. So instead of having a mode variable with a lot of ifs, a lot of conditionals, we use the location in place of the rich mode variable, and we use the routes in place of manual switches. Hmm? That's the idea. So first we have a plan, which are the, I call them pages. We understand they are not really pages. The page is only one, okay? It's only main.js. But we call them pages because they are client pages, okay? Screens, layouts, routes. Hmm? So we don't have a specific term for that. Uh, let's call them pages between us, okay? Uh, different pages inside a single page application. Mm, looks like a contradiction, but we can live with that. Uh, the different internal pages of the application that we identify with some different location strings. So in this case, adding a new question would be very easy because the add button would just be navigate to this address and then when we are navigating to this address we will build the form and we decide whether in this address the question title should be rendered or not the list of answers should be rendered or not by analyzing the address okay okay so these are our plan after the break we will learn the components for implementing this plan and we'll try to implement part of it okay so let's go for the break.